And so you guys know that ARM is the most pervasive ISA, CPU ISA the world's ever known. It's on 100, 100 billion plus uh, computing devices. In the next several years, uh, very few question, it will cross the trillion, trillion devices mark. And now with IoT and sensors out all over the place and smart sensors all over the place, you know, ARM is, ARM is really, really uh, going to continue to grow. And um, this industry has, has, uh, uh, has pursued uh, advancing ARM into uh, all different types of configurations of, of high-performance computing. And people do that because this CPU is completely open. We use ARM. We use ARM because there are certain types of computers that we want to build. For example, we built Xavier, which is the world's first robotics processor. The configuration of it, um, the way that it communicates, the real-time nature of sensors, the proportioning of, of um, uh, uh, single-threaded uh, performance computation, uh, AI computation, parallel computation with CUDA, uh, the proportion of all that was so different, we needed, we needed the ability to configure our own computer. Well, it turns out a lot of people need the same thing, whether it's because uh, certain, uh, increasingly, people realize that high-performance computing is the engine of the next industrial revolution. Now, it sounds a little cliche, and I, it sounds a little cliche even as I say it, but it's completely true. We automated power in the first couple of generations of, of um, eras of, of uh, industrial revolution, and this time we're automating automation. The ability to put AI everywhere is truly an extraordinary event. And countries recognize this. And so, so uh, nations, ourselves, uh, and many nations around the world are investing in building their own high-performance computing infrastructure. For example, Euro HPC. Uh, the, the folks in Japan are building their own hyper, su um, uh, supercomputers for this very reason, because they, they need to advance supercomputing in the way that they see uh, the world emerging. There are different types of computers that are being built. Some of it's done in the edge, some of it's done in hyperscale cloud. Some of the high-performance computers are designed for very, very fast I.O., very, very fast storage. Some of it's designed so that it could be incredibly secure. And so everybody has a different motivation for designing high-performance computing. There used to be one type, supercomputers. Now there are so many different types as the universe of HPC expands in literally every single direction, the ability for people to take a simple ISA like ARM that has the pervasiveness of ARM and to be able to configure all kinds of different computers is really quite, power, quite powerful. And we see all kinds. Um, these are just some of the block diagrams that, that uh, you guys might have seen as well. Uh, the folks at Ampere, they call it EMAG, they're optimizing for hyper, hyperscale and storage. Uh, Amazon, they call it Graviton, it's for hyperscale and smart NICs. Uh, Marvell Thunder X2, hyperscale HPC and storage. Uh, Fujitsu has a really incredible processor, they call it A64FX for supercomputing. And Huawei just recently announced a really great processor, they call the Kumpeng 920 for big data analytics and edge. And so there are so many different configurations and everybody's optimizing for different things. And the amount of I.O. that they have is different. The amount of cache they have is different. The amount of cores they have is different. Some of them have giant cores. Some of them have smaller cores, a whole bunch of them. And so the, the configuration of it is completely different. And people over the years have asked us if we couldn't uh, please bring our CUDA GPUs to this ecosystem. And so several months ago, we announced that we, we would. And so we've been working on um, cultivating, developing, the CUDA ecosystem for ARM. And um, uh, it turns out, it turns out the, the lifting is not terrible because uh, um, uh, all of the applications are open source and uh, we work with all the ecosystem. And CUDA is, is uh, 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 the engineers that worked on CUDA, CUDA and uh, one of them is right here, uh, Chris Lamb, has done such a great job that the, the, the porting of the ecosystem and the uh, cultivating of the ecosystem for ARM uh, has been really fantastic. And uh, we, um, uh, we had a good friend over at Oak Ridge uh, start working on it right away. And so, so this is based on a Thunder X2 and just basically one Volta. And um, uh, some of the things that they said were fantastic. They, they wrote, a, they wrote a, a paper on it 
the stack is really solid straight out of the box. On par with power in x86. This is from Jack Wells. And um, uh, Satoshi, uh, a good friend who's, who's a, a, you know, provided a lot of guidance over the years in, in, um, uh, in for, the, for the whole HPC industry, a new wave of HPC and AI converged workloads in Japan. And uh, the importance of uh, the arm work that's done in Japan uh, for, their, for uh, the national uh, HPC efforts. And the speed ups are all fantastic. The speed ups are fantastic. And so today, Today we're announcing, so, the, so it's, it, 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 seemed like an it, it seemed like an experiment, but it wasn't. Our company is fully dedicated to this. We just haven't announced too many things since. And um, we, have, we have a bunch of people working on it. And uh, so today we're announcing our, our first um, reference uh, platform, the uh, NVIDIA HPC for ARM. And um, let me show it to you. So this, thank you. So this, ladies and gentlemen, are four GPUs, and they sit basically in that chassis up there. This is the configuration, and we made it so that anybody's CPUs, anybody's CPUs could be connected to this, okay? And so these are the two CPU boxes. In these boxes that we have here, these are the, the Marvell Thunder X2s, really fantastic CPUs. Uh, really great I.O. And um, uh, the single-threaded performance is approximately that of a, of a high-end modern uh, Xeon CPU. And so, so um, uh, the Thunder X2s, two of them in here and two of them down here, connected through an external cable for PCI Express. And so this way, whether it's an Ampere or a Fujitsu or anybody else, uh, this is a, a really wonderful way for you guys uh, to get connected. And it, each one of the pairs connect through this to connect to four uh, Volta GPUs. Okay, and its connection uh, looks a little bit like that. And so this is our first development system for ARM HPC. <laughs> and it's lighter than it used to be. I think we're making our systems lighter and lighter. Must be those simulations. Okay, so this is what the box looks like. And as you know, we design everything in, in digital, so it's easy to make them translucent. Okay. <laughs> this, is, this is the beauty of doing everything in digital, you guys. Okay, we do everything in digital, and, and then uh, we just, uh, I just ask them for, show me what it looks like. And it looks like this. And um, uh, uh, it has uh, four Mellanox NICs. These are the CX-5s, and then we'll have CX-6s next. Incredibly high performance. And we've been working with the industry, all of you. Uh, the, the, the industry has, has uh, really, really been fantastic. Uh, everybody's jumping on, and, and uh, we already have 30 applications from molecular dynamics to quantum chemistry to imaging to uh, Comet that was a one of the things that I demonstrated earlier, TensorFlow. So now ARM has AI, uh, TensorFlow. Uh, Reliant, which is a cryo-electron microscopy imaging system. And uh, um, all of your favorite and best uh, programming tools, including, including uh, PGI. And um, uh, the, CPU, the CPU partners are, are uh, fantastic and growing. And, and um, uh, you know, this is, I think this is going to be a, a great ecosystem. Uh, basically, everything that runs in high-performance computing should run on any GPU or any CPU as well. And so GPU, CPU, uh, it's basically an open system. As you know, all of those applications are open source and uh, could be ported from, application to, from platform to platform to platform. And so we now work with uh, IBM. We work with uh, uh, Intel CPUs. We work with AMD CPUs. And we work with um, ARM CPUs. Okay, and so that's our reference platform, and um, you know it's always good to see it work. Now it turns out uh, all of these applications on top, uh, watching them work, is not it's not so bad as as grass grow, um, but but uh, uh, it, it uh, takes a long time, uh, as they should, um, and so so uh, we chose one that is uh, fun to watch, 
and uh, it's called VMD. Now, VMD is, is uh, developed by a gentleman named John Stone. Now, John Stone, I like to call him the great John Stone. And so John Stone, uh, John Stone uh, was um, uh, probably the first CUDA developer, scientific code CUDA developer. And um, if not for NAMD being ported to CUDA uh, uh, quite a long time ago, and uh, when you see him, he'll stand up, you, you'll just be amazed. He, he looked exactly the same. He was a child then, he's a child now. And um, uh, so John Stone uh, ported NAMD to CUDA and got incredible speed ups. And so when we came up with this new, new computer, uh, we needed to, hey, who's going to try it? Hey, hey, let's give it to Mikey. And so, so uh, we called John Stone. And, uh, hey, John Stone, could you uh, give this, take this out for a world? And uh, he says, yeah, sure, why not? And so, so uh, he, he, we, he's only had it for a few days. And, and uh, let's see what he came up with. All right, great, John Stone. Thanks, Jensen. So uh, this is VMD, <laughs> the molecular visualization tool that I developed at University of Illinois. And uh, it's running on an ARM machine in Santa Clara, California. And you're seeing it, uh, this is a fully featured version of the program, so it has all the same features it does on all the other hardware platforms we support. Um, our NIH-funded uh, research center develops these research tools, and we want to make them available to all the different uh, hardware platforms that the research community uses. And so you're seeing this uh, now running on a Thunder X2-based machine with two Tesla V100s. And it's showing a live interactive ray tracing that's being driven by Vishal here. And uh, this ray tracing is then compressed in real time and streamed over the internet and is displayed here in Denver. And what we're showing is a large photosynthetic organelle. It's a, a piece of a, a little uh, a purple bacteria that lives at the very bottom of uh, various ponds where there's not very much light. And it uh, does photosynthesis, so these little green Ring-like structures are chlorophylls, and they basically uh, capture the photons from light, and they, that's in the early stage of a long sequence of operations that take place. They convert that light into chemical energy in the form of ATP, which is the fuel of all the cell life on Earth. And so this is a, you know, in terms of photosynthetic uh, machines, this is incredible because this simple thing, uh, simple compared to plants and other uh, things, it is, uh, it, its energy return on investment is uh, four times better than the best engineered thing that humans have been able to come up with. And so we and our uh, various collaborators all over the world uh, are interested in studying how these things work. And this is, uh, when it's simulated on a supercomputer, every, sing every single thing you see there has been simulated on a su supercomputer, both in isolation and now in, in totality. This uh, aggregates to hundreds of millions of node hours over decades, and many, many, many PhDs uh, and researchers all over the world working on this. So it's really cool to see this. You're seeing an atomic detail structure, and um, the, it's like a little Swiss watch. It's amazingly uh, sophisticated. And so uh, here you are. You're seeing it running on an ARM machine, John, and it just I, works. I guess, ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't think anybody's ever heard uh, a description of otherwise normal human known as pond scum uh, yeah. uh, with so much enthusiasm. <laughs> and uh, with, okay, so, so ladies and gentlemen, John Stone. Thank you. Next time, next time you're swimming in a pond and you step on that gooey, slippery stuff on the bottom, you'll think of John Stone. From now on, I am certain of it. Every supercomputing scientist in the world, when they think pond scum, John Stone. I love you, man. Incredible work.